So gravitational interactions. That's going to be our first example of actually being able to describe and calculate uh, one of these fundamental interactions. So gravitational interactions involve objects that have mass. Any two massive objects interact with each other. And so we can sort of figure out what an equation for gravitational interaction has to look like by just kind of thinking about what we know about what is probably true about gravitational interactions. So do you think more massive objects exert stronger gravitational forces or weaker gravitational forces on other objects? Stronger. So therefore, mass should appear in it. And the bigger the mass, the bigger the force. So it better be in the numerator of whatever equation we come up with, right? And there's two objects. So there's the, the mass of the system. We'll call this mass of the system. There's also mass of the object in the surroundings. Or we can just call this 1 and 2. It's going to be proportional to both of those. Um, there's probably some constant to make the units come out right. That's, that's the gravitational constant, g. And it has the value. Uh, This is capital G, not little g. And it has the value 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. Uh, Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. All these constants are in the back of the textbook. Um, and they'll be given to you on tests. But what else is going to? be important in deciding how strong a gravitational interaction between two objects is distance. And the farther away they get, the bigger the distance. You want the interaction to be bigger or smaller? Smaller. So therefore, that better go in the denominator. And it turns out that we it might have been um, Proportional distance, it turns out it could, it's proportional to the square of the distance. So it falls off fast as distance gets bigger. So that's the magnitude of a force. And now let's see if we can actually write it precisely as a vector equation, because of course we need directions in order to pr actually predict how forces are going to affect. So let's suppose that we have. Um, Here's object one. Maybe it's a star. And here's object two, and that's a planet. OK, we're interested in the force on the planet due to the star. We're going to be interested in both forces, actually. But for right now, we're going to call the planet the system and the star the surroundings. What's What's the direction of the force on the planet due to this star going to be? Can you just point? It's going to be attracted to the star, isn't it? So it better, it better end up being a force that way. And that suggests we better have some vectors involved. And since we're going to need a distance, which could be the magnitude of a vector, it looks like the vector we want to start out with is going to be the relative position vector the position of the planet relative to the star. So this is r. This is relative position vector. So position of planet minus position of star relative to some origin. So we might have had an origin here. So here would be the position of the star relative to our origin. Here's the position of the planet relative to the origin. And then here's our relative position vector, position of the planet relative to the star. And so now we can make this a little bit more precise. So we can write the gravitational force as F on uh, on the system by the surroundings. 
So we have this gravitational constant. We have the mass of the system. We have the mass of the object in the surroundings. And for the distance, that's just going to be the magnitude of this relative position vector, isn't it? So we can actually write the magnitude of r squared. And now we need a direction. Well, we just want the direction. We've already taken care of the, the magnitude. We just want a direction. So we want to use the unit vector, r hat. So we'll make this little unit vector r hat here. So here's r hat. And we've got r hat. But actually, the force on this, the planet is in the direction of minus r hat. And so to take care of that, we usually write it this way. We could write minus r hat in parentheses here. That might actually be clearer. But it's, it's typically written this way. And that says r hat is this way, so the force on the planet is that way. So that's, that's the gravitational force law. OK, so let's see if we can calculate a gravitational force. So if we have some positions, a, a star and a planet, and we want to find the gravitational force on the planet by the star, we need to find the unit vector r hat. So what is the unit vector r hat for this particular situation? Actually, let's read our diagram so it looks like the positions given here. So we've got an origin down here somewhere. The star is at, so if we say this is 1, 2, 1, 2, the star is at point there. And the planet is at 2, 1.5, so it looks like the planet's there. And it's always a good idea to draw these diagrams. If you don't draw the diagram, it's, it's going to be tough to check your work. Yeah, so that's 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 not going to fly. <laughs> because so so the so 40% say two and 60% say one. Last time on the last quiz, the majority were not correct actually. So so you gotta you gotta get this stuff straight. You gotta get the directions straight. So we have a diagram. Okay, so the definition of R is it's the position of the system relative to the object in the surroundings. So therefore, what is the vector R? How do I draw the vector R? Where's its tail? Tail's on S, and it goes to the planet. So that's the that's the position of the planet relative to the star. That's if you start at the star, that's the vector you'd have to walk along to get to the planet. So that's where the planet is relative to the star. Okay, this is chapter one. You gotta know it. Therefore, let's so then we're gonna have that it's gonna be the position of the planet minus the position of the star. And so that's What's the position of the planet? 2 times 10 to the 11th, 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, 0 meters minus 0.5 times 10 to the 11th, uh, 1 times 10 to the 11th, 0 meters. And so we get 1.5. Times 10 to the 11, 0.5 times 10 to the 11, 0 meters for R. And both of these components are positive, and we use our diagram to check it. And yes, positive x, positive y. Okay, got to nail it. And then, then you went on, and you had to get the magnitude of R 
which turned out to be some number uh, 1.58 times 10 to the 11 meters. We're going to need that. And then you, R hat was R over the magnitude of R. It's got to have positive components, and that turned out to be 0 0.9. Uh, point three one six zero no units because it's meters over meters. Questions? Yes. Yes, that's what that minus sign is doing there. Gravity is entirely attractive. So you're never you're never repelled by the Earth, although that might be sort of fun. It's not a dumb question, and in fact, because the electric force can be either. Okay, so we'll see that two protons would repel each other, two electrons would repel each other, a proton and electron will attract each other. In order to get a repulsive force. Uh, one of these masses would have to be negative, and we don't think there's any such thing as negative mass. So gravity is always going to be attractive, always a pull. So that's what the equation is trying to describe. So let's just go ahead and calculate the force, shall we? Um, so we want the magnitude, which is going to be G, so it's going to be 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the masses. What's the mass? We need masses. Okay, so the star's mass is 10 to the 30th kilograms. And the planet's mass is smaller. It's 5 times 10 to the 24th. And now we need the magnitude of R, which you calculated. So that's 1.58 times 10 to the 11th meters squared. And that's a magnitude. Everything's positive, so it's going to be a positive number. And that comes out to... Uh, 1.34 times 10 to the 22 newtons. And then what do we do with the magnitude to actually get the force? We've got to multiply it by minus r, don't we? So the force is going to end up being, yeah, we don't need that anymore. The force is going to end up being minus 1.34 times 10 to the 22 newtons times 0 0.949.3160. And it'll have some, some value. What does it come out to? Uh, negative. One point two seven times ten to the twenty two negative four point two four times ten to the twenty one zero newtons. Okay, so we calculated the force on the the planet due to the star. So let's draw our diagram again. Here's the star. Here was the planet. These have negative components. That seems right because the planet is attracted to the star. 